Well, it's full-on playoff time in North Dakota High School football this week, so you know what that means. It's time to bring in the heavy hitters here <laughs> on Midco Sports Network. Alongside 103.9 The Trucks, Brad Anderson, and 740 The Fans, Chase Miller. I'm Jody Norstead. These two guys have been gracious enough to give us some of their time the last few years, and they keep showing up, so we must be doing <laughs> something right. It's time to set the table for quarterfinal weekend in the Peace Garden State, and we'll share our game-by-game -game picks on MidcoSN.com, just like last week, which, uh, by the way, I have a one-point lead, boys. <laughs> Thank oh, you, nice. St. John Woodchucks. That's all I have to say. Nine-man nine football keeping you the yeah, right Yeah, that was right. Yeah. right? But let's start our conversation in AAA. The dust settled after a wild finish to the regular season, and now we have our bracket. South travels to WDA champ Century. Mandam will come to play Davies in a rematch of the regular season. Another rematch pits Minot against Cheyenne and West Fargo, and then a couple of historic programs. Bismarck hosts West Fargo, Mark Gibson v. J. Gibson, and let's, uh, that, that should be a fun showdown. But let's call this segment of, the, uh, of our preview Two Cents. Chase, give me your <laughs> two cents on the Century South Showdown. Sounds good. I'm glad I at least have two cents instead two of one cent. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Uh, you know, I, I look at this matchup with Bismarck Century, and I think the biggest thing that I stand out, Jody, right off the bat is that Century has a chance to do what West Fargo did in 2017 and Bismarck High did in 2018, which is go 12-0, and run the table, be an undefeated team, have a senior quarterback like Ravdo with the Packers in 17, like Will Madler with the Bismarck High mm -hmm. in 2018. And Fargo South, I, I think you got to give the ball to Enoch as much as you can. they got Bless FOMO, Danny LaHaye and company out there. But uh, I, for me, with Garcia in the backfield too with Century, this is Century's class to lose. I think we've said it from day number one. South got in with the draw after losing to West Fargo Cheyenne thanks to Davies beating Chanley. But I think at the end of the day, it's too much Bismarck Century with Garcia and Feeney for, for Fargo South to overcome. Yeah, and we were thinking it was centuries to lose before Kay Garcia even burst onto the scene. Mm -hmm. Mainly a JV player last year, but boy, he has been electric in that backfield. Great opposite Grant Anderson and, of course, Cade Feeney, what he's been able to do. Brad, two cents. Give it to me. Man down against Davies. Well, Davies probably gets to play other home field. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> um, I think they have just too many weapons. Just the, the what they can throw at you with their ground game and Hartness, the quarterback, and Satter on the outside where... You know, everything, a lot of what Mandan deals with is with Elijah Klein on the outside. With the weather the way it is now, I mean, will that be a factor or not? But I think Davies just has, I think, overall better resume. I mean, I, I compare Mandan and South a lot. They got in. You kind of look at their resume. How many winning teams did they beat? I mean, they, they did just enough to get into the postseason. But do they have enough to take the next step? I think Davies just too many weapons to get and it done. And a playoff rematch from a year ago, right? right? They played yeah. that game at Fargo South. Davies... Uh, got the win, but Mandan was without quarterback Dane Carlson, who will mm -hmm. play in this game. you got to think a little bit of a chip on his shoulder entering this one. I'll take the Cheyenne against Minot, two cents. Here's what I'll say. Cheyenne has a great rushing attack, and they've played solid defense throughout the year. They also beat Minot in the regular season. Way back early on in the year, it was a homecoming win. Rika Penu rushed for, I think, 90 yards and a pair of scores in that game. But it was a one-score game with eight minutes left, and Cheyenne, guys, has a history of struggling in the postseason. Last year... They beat Legacy, but that one was a nail-biter despite being one versus four. I think this one will be close. And keep in mind, before missing out on the postseason last year, Minot had won five straight quarterfinal games, including just two years ago uh, when Mustangs fans, they don't want this memory, <laughs> they hung up 66 in West Fargo against Cheyenne. I see this being a one-score game. It'll be interesting. Uh, and then that early game will be that Bismarck versus West Fargo showdown. This is kind of a coin flip to me, guys. Both teams playing their best football of the year. Both have won three of their last four. I'd give the edge to the Demons because they're at home. Isaiah Hughes has been running wild. Has had 200-plus yards in three out of the last four games. Of course, that fourth game being that loss to Century, he kind of ran into a buzzkill there. But here's another nugget. Under Jay Gibson, West Fargo has never beaten the Demons in Bismarck. It should be fun. It should be a slobber knocker, shouldn't it? I, I love the word right there, slobber knocker, that you yeah. use right there. Uh, the one thing about Jay Gibson that we know, his teams get better week in mm -hmm. and week out defensively with that vaunted 5 2 defense. And you got Gully, you know, at linebacker alongside with uh, Michael Johnson. Those two guys play the two at the linebacker. They make a lot of tackles. And you got Bali there at running back. And he's emerged kind of like Garcia has for Century. He's emerged into a nice combo package for Gibson on the offense. The question is. Can West Fargo's offense do enough with Bismarck High? I think that is the one teetering point in this game where yeah. if they can get some yards, move the ball down the field, 
put up. This might be the first team to 14 wins with these two type of with these two players. I say the other thing is too, is just looking at turnover wise, Mertz has thrown 10 interceptions. That's the most in the EEC, and I'd imagine if you get to that's what you want to do if you're the Bismarck defense, get West Fargo into third and seven, third and eight, third and ten, and see if they'll uh, they'll make it a mistake. Mertz has cleaned it up a little bit though. The last few weeks he's played a lot better. We did it last week for Class A and Nine Man. Give me your state championship matchups in Class 3, Brad. Uh, I think it's Century, you know, Century in the field, but uh, you see in the, that other half, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, you're probably looking at Century. I'm going to say Century and Cheyenne. I think it's Cheyenne's turn to get to the championship. Yeah, if you were in the East, you were hoping for a one seed or a three seed in the East because that means you didn't have to wait to see a Century potentially until the championship. And I look at the bottom half of the bracket. I like Cheyenne too now. I'm circling a date next week, and if Cheyenne and West Fargo meet in the semis, that would be a lot of fun yep, in West Fargo, really. but at the same point, too, if Bismarck High and West Fargo Cheyenne meet, then you might have a rematch of last year's state title, which saw Bismarck High come out on top over Century. But I like the Mustangs, even without Gold Daddy, but what they've been able to do, impressive win against Fargo South, obviously against the Fargo Davies two weeks ago. I think they're clicking right now, Jody, on a lot of good cylinders. And if Cheyenne wins and Bismarck wins, that would be a rematch from the game that we televised the first week yep. of the regular season. Cheyenne went out to Bismarck and they beat the Demons out there, but this is a different Demons team right now. So I think Bismarck would have a really good shot to, to possibly knock off Cheyenne. I think West Fargo would have a good shot, but it's just, it's hard to pick against that number one seed. But again, Cheyenne has struggled in the postseason. I'm going to say Cheyenne and Century, but boy, it, it's very enticing to, to, to try to pick Bismarck uh, or maybe even West Fargo. It, it should be a fun uh, division in Class 3A. Coming up. Let's jump to Class 2A. Here's a look at the bracket. West Region Champ Beulah hosts Devil's Lake. I give the Miners a big edge in that one, but the Firebirds have played some tight games with the top teams in the state the last month and a half. Valley City hosts Hazen. Top ranked Hillsborough Central Valley gets Turtle Mountain and Kindred travels to St. Mary's. What has your attention in Class 2A, Chase? You kind of said the Firebirds and the Miners. The Miners, I think, are a heavy favorite in this game, but you look at what Devil's Lake's been able to do so far this year, Jody, and they lost by a point in overtime at Hillsborough Central Valley. They played a one-score game with the Valley City Highlanders. The question is for Devil's Lake, do they have enough offense against that Miners defense? Can they score 20 points with that single wing T Jim Dooley-led uh, <laughs> offense that I call a minor package? And Beulah, they've been here before. I mean, 2015 state champs in Class AA, they know what it takes to make a run here in November to the Fargo. Brad, I know you can probably go with the Kindred game and St. Yep. Mary's, Valley City, and Hazen and company, but I'm looking at this Devils Lake team. If they can score enough points, mm -hmm. you know, that can make it a really fun quarterfinal round matchup. I, I, I like the Kindred St. Mary's game. St. Mary's schedule has been really disjointed this year because yeah. they had that game with Devils Lake that got canceled. They had the big lead with Beulah that it was 35-7 and they coughed it up and lost 36-35. You know, I'd be curious to see playing on their home field, first playoff game there. Uh, and they've got some experience there with, you know, the quarterback coming back and Curl. And, I mean, they've got some guys that are, are used to this time of year facing a kindred team that, you know, has just been really steady. I mean, they, they gave Hillsborough fits despite, what, five turnovers, I think it was in that game, five, six turnovers. And um, they've got... Some, Maybe a, maybe a secret weapon with Schaefer on special teams as well, if that becomes a factor. I think they'll keep this, I think they'll keep it close. They can, they can hang around, you just never know. Be interesting to see. Let's uh, get our predictions. Who's meeting for the title on November 15th, Chase? I'm going to go with Beulah and, oh, Bismarck St. Mary's doesn't get there. What's Class 2A going to do <laughs> with 2A with being Shanley and St. Mary's for so yeah. many years? But I'm going to go Beulah, and I think Hillsborough Central Valley is going to be able to do just enough <laughs> with their game against Turtle Mountain. Whoever they play in the semifinals, if it's Kindred, mm -hmm. as you said, Brad, they want that rematch. If you're the Vikings, yeah. five turnovers, you lose at home. But Bismarck St. Mary's also lost to Hillsborough Central Valley earlier in the year. Yeah. So either way, there would be a rematch going. I think the top seeds, again, I know it's chalk, but I like the Miners and the Burrows. Uh, I like the Burrows. I think they'll come out of the bottom half. I don't think we're talking enough about Valley City. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that that defense uh, is very impressive. They do just enough offensively. They've got three different guys that can run the football. Max Fair is the main guy. Mitchell Taylor is a good fullback. Uh, I just, with Gerhardt and that defense, I think they might surprise some teams. I wouldn't be surprised if they can get past Hayes and if they can go out to Beulah and win. It wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Brad actually on this. I, Buell is a really, really good team, but, mm -hmm. but Valley City's been playing really well. Uh, it got thumped early in the season and lost to some teams, but uh, you kind of knew coming in it was going to maybe take some time for these guys to really build that confidence, and right now they're playing well. I know that they just lost to Hillsborough Central Valley in the East Region Championship game, 
Uh, but I think the Highlanders have a shot to make that championship game and line it up against the Burles. We'll see what happens. It'll happen in just about <laughs> three weeks. So looking forward to that in the Fargo Dome. All right, we have one round down in Class A and eight teams left to decide a champ. All four seeded teams advanced. The only road team to win in Class A was Thompson, giving us three teams from Region 1 into the quarterfinals. Which matchup are you most looking forward to, Bradley? Boy, there's a lot of good mm -hmm. ones, actually. Yeah. Um, I will go with Oaks and Langdon just because I think, um, you know, I asked a Region 1 coach, I said, compare Oaks and compare Lisbon. And he says, very similar on the potential, what they can do offensively. Oaks has a little more balance to them. They could throw the ball a little bit more and where you know, a lot of things with Lisbon is predicated on, on Schultz and Sowers with a little bit of Dawson Peril on a counter play or something on the outside. You know, I think Oaks, I think, has the, bit, the best offensive capability for a team that Langan sees this year. And I think defensively, they forced a bunch of turnovers last week in the second half against Rugby. If there's a team to this point that could maybe go up there and win, it might be the Tornadoes. And we've seen the strength of Region 1. Just look at all the teams that are still alive where Langdon and Moore Munich wasn't maybe as tested as mm -hmm. a lot of those teams in the regular season. Chase, what's your matchup? Yeah, I'm going to stay in the East with Brad, and we're calling the game two on radio on 740. The fans, so selfish plug, but uh, Lisbon and Thompson, that's that's a rematch from the Thompson Tommies. You know, can they contain Lisbon enough and not give a 20, 30, 40-yard rush? Can it be that three-yard in a cloud of dust and then maybe stop them on fourth down? Plus, they got a really good running back in Sam Roller. I mean, he's a guy that's got almost 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns in the season for, for Thompson, but then you look at the Sowers for, yeah. for Lisbon yeah. alongside with uh, Hunter Schultz. That's a pretty one-two dynamic duo with what they were able to do in their first round win too. So that's a fun one to me. I know there's great matchups in all four games. I think you can make a case for the two out west. But Lisbon and Thompson, this is a fun one to say who could win and possibly if right. Oaks doesn't knock off Langdon, who can maybe take down the Cardinals in their 20-plus <laughs> game winning streak they got right now. You know, one thing that you got to do with Lisbon is – you. First down is going to be key. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I would love to see what they get on first down because the times I've seen them, it's six, seven yards, and if they get to second and three, forget it. Then, then yeah. they just break, they wear you down, and then they eventually, you know, they might break one for a score or something like that. Thompson did a very good job, forced them to throw the ball a little bit the first time around. You know, Bishop Ryan in Bowman County is really interesting. Bishop Ryan had, you know, Keller had a big game last week, and I yeah. think they really, they got three touchdowns in about seven, eight minutes span last week against New Salem. I think it was and, two minutes. Yeah, it was something like that. I mean, it was a really quick, and it pretty much changed changed the game against New yeah. Salem, uh, against New Salem, uh, Glen Ullen. So um, that, to me, is a in, in, in very intriguing matchup. As much as I like Bowman County, Bishop Ryan's got the weapons to pick them off. Right, with Merck and Nick Sanders, a quarterback. That should be a fun one. It's fantasy draft time. This, this will right. be fun. Class A style. You can take any player from these eight remaining teams to start your team. We'll go in alphabetical order because I'm a nice guy. Brad, <laughs> first pick. Who do you take out of all these eight teams? You get one player. I'm going to take Jordan Sowers from Lisbon. Not, not so much what Homer. He, well, I guess say, it's, <laughs> it's the red and gold in me. I can't help it. But uh, I do like what he does running the football, but he is just as good a player defensively as he mm -hmm. is. You put him and Sam Rieger, uh, a couple of really good linebackers coming back from that team uh, that has made that step up. But I just... Sowers, what he can do running the football and especially defensively. Um, I don't know if that Lisbon defense gets as much credit as they should. They're very good. Chase, you're on the clock, and now you're up. It's hard not to pick someone from Langdon, right? <laughs> right. Or possibly Swahovic from Bowman County. Yeah. I'm going with my all-name guy. I'm going Jersey Sellers. Uh, <laughs> Sellers <laughs> with the Velva. I just yeah. love the name. I mean, right there, that sold me <laughs> draft number one. So I'm giving you, Jody, uh, probably a plethora of guys to choose from. You're going to be, you're giving me this at round number, yeah. pick number three, but a Selzer's. You're holding from, up the jersey. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? exactly. If they win and Selzer's has a big game, we'll get a Velvet yeah. jersey, hopefully a Aggie jersey here. But no, I think with what he's been able to do, mm. with what Velva likes to do, run the football, but also at quarterback, able, able to go down the field at times and, and find a couple of their playmakers. I really like what Velva's been able to do with Selzer's this year. Well, yeah, you left the door open. I'm, I'm taking my guy, Jacob Swihovic, <laughs> quarterback for Bowman County. I mean, threw seven touchdowns the other week, uh, led him to a 52-0 victory in the first round of the playoffs. And, geez, I don't know. Hold on. No one picked from Langdon? Uh, Simon Romfo? No. no one picked Grant Romfo? Mm -hmm. No one picked any of those guys? I don't know. Uh, Simon Romfo is one of those. I'll just take both of those guys because it's a snake <laughs> draft, and so it's coming yeah. back to me. So I'll take Swihovic and then Simon Romfo and what he's able to do with Langdon Emmer Munich because... Boy, that's a huge oversight, guys. He already won a state championship as a sophomore. 
in line to maybe win another one here as a junior quarterback for that team. But uh, that Langdon Emmore roster is just loaded. Yeah. So in, in Bowman County, I don't know if they're as loaded, but Swihovic has been a huge uh, part of their success. So that's kind of fun. I like that. Yeah. Well, let's head to Nyman. And as you look at the bracket, you'll see a few upsets from round one. St. John, yeah, they won at Mayport CG behind a four-touchdown performance from Quarterback Adam Jolly, another one of the great names in this state. Beach won at Central McLean, 8-0 to set up a showdown with region foe Linton HMB. Grant County Flasher was the other upset, knocking out seeded Ray Powers Lake. The Storm get Kidder County in all region four tilt. All four region four teams, guys, get into the quarterfinals. How about that? That is impressive. You know, and we talked about it last week when we were in the, during the podcast about how it seemed like a nine man. There was about seven or eight teams that were really legit that had really solid records. And you know, and when I was voting, he had to pick five of them every week in the poll. It's like I feel like we're leaving somebody out, and we it's not like we left Grant County Flasher out. We <laughs> yeah. left Kidder County out. So you kind of wondered, okay, you know, show us, and sh and they they certainly did. I mean, doing what they did out west, uh, very impressive showing, and they're still playing. And still a chance, Jody, for an all region four Dakota Bowl because yeah. they're on opposite sides, unlike mm -hmm. in Class A, where you mm -hmm. kind of got the east and the west. Yep. You might see a rematch or two potentially in that region. And I know we kind of said in the podcast too, Cavalier New Rockford Cheyenne. A lot of people are curious if that might be a November right. nine a.m. fifteenth nine man matchup. But there might there might be a region four team without question in that Dakota Bowl mix. I think so. And in the spirit of Halloween, guys, give me a team that should feel safe and a team that should feel scared here in this nine-man uh, quarterfinal round. Brad? Who should feel safe? Man, uh, I'm going to go maybe with the orange with Cavalier, maybe yeah. with the orange and black. Um, <laughs> Fearless in yeah, Halloween, yeah, Exactly. Right? <laughs> if, we're, if we're going with the Halloween theme, I think Cavalier with the, the familiarity of playing a team in Saint, at St. John again maybe helps. Now the question is where are they going to play it? Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't decided yet, as far as I know, where they're going to play that yet. Um, they played in Grand Forks yep. last week yep. at Cushman Field. So I just think I just think with the familiarity and with the, how they handled St. John the first time, I think I think they're probably safe. Boy, who could be scared? Uh, I would think Finley Sharon Hope Page might be a possibility with yep. that with that with Belquist and Grant and what they can throw out there and that's gonna be awfully tough. And Finley Sharon Hope Page has not had to play from behind very much this year. And if we were talking about this after the game last week against North Prairie. The, the Spartans have to get out to a better start. It's important to them that they get out to a good start first. Yeah. Because um, one, they haven't played from behind, and that offense is not wired to come from two, you know, a score or two down or two scores down for sure. They did play. Zerfus did play pretty well. He did in that in that game uh, last week, and he threw some touchdowns. He looked pretty good. He did, yeah. He, he threw two touchdown passes. Really could have had a third. Platt dropped one where he was, yeah. you know, from here to the door. There was not a defender in sight, and he just took his eyes off it and dropped it. But that passing offense is effective when it has to be. And I was talking with one of the North Prairie assistants after the game, and he says we were so focused on looking in the backfield and where Jack Irie was that we just, yep. we forgot about Platt, we forgot about, uh, we forgot about Zerfus and it hurt him on a couple of, uh, couple of big plays. Chase, it's who's safe, who's scared? It's probably bulletin board material for the woodchucks, but I'm going to go with Brad here and say <laughs> Cavalier, right? I mean, two guys right off the bat say St. John is the team that probably won't upend, you know, Cavalier and the Tornadoes probably find themselves <laughs> in the semifinal. Uh, the team that I might be scared of is Kidder County with Grant County Flasher just because they played not too long ago mm -hmm. and Kidder County kind of took it to them. So is this a revenge game? I know you could say that with St. John and Cavalier, but how close that these two teams played against each other is this one where Grant County Flasher goes, we just went up and took care of a number three seed in the Outlaws in Ray Powers Lake. Now it's time for a little revenge and maybe they find themselves all of a sudden, Jody, in the semifinals. I can also go to Beach and Linton HMB and make a comparable deal going a non-seeded Beach team with what they're able to do when they're running back in the backfield. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be a dangerous team to go on the road and, and beat a Linton HMB team. But I think if you're Kidder County right now, you're going, did we play our best against Grant County Flasher and did the storm kind of go, Maybe that was a game that we want to do over, or here's your chance in the quarterfinals for that do over. See, and I'm, I'm flipping the script. I'm going Kidder County. I've, I'm feeling pretty safe because I'm telling my guys, we know we can beat this team. We can hammer this team. We did it to, to them. We shut them out a, you know, a handful of weeks ago. The weather conditions were a little tricky that night, but I think this Kidder County team, with, with the guys that it has in the backfield, Hager and Harders, 
that they have some dudes, and I think Kidder County is going to feel pretty safe uh, taking on a region foe, a, a, an opponent that they're familiar with. I know you can use that both ways, but I just think Kidder County can feel pretty safe right now. The scared team, I agree with Brad. How could it not be Finley, Sharon, Hope, Page? You've you've ran the table from here to there, and now that now you're lining up against the number two ranked team in the state, really, uh, New Rockford, Cheyenne, a team that. Uh, I mean, if it wasn't monkey conditions up in Cavalier, they could yeah. be the number one team yeah. in the state. Um, but now they're in, you know, they're not a seeded team because of that loss. And I just think that Rockets team is super dangerous and, and we definitely could see them in the Dakota Bowl. So Finley, Sharon, Hope Page, I mean, that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, the, like you said, I think the Spartans need to get out to a lead. Otherwise, they're going to be in quite a bit of trouble. Thank you guys again for coming in. This was fun. You bet. Right. Thanks, Jody. All right. We'll chat again next week. Enjoy the games, everyone.